I've got 5.30 on the clock, so we will get going here. I see we've got recording going, so we should be good to go. Uh, welcome everyone to the November 19th Hadley Public School School Committee meeting. And is there a motion to call the meeting to order? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great, and it's nice to see all of our uh, attendees at the meeting, even if we're seeing you virtually. It's great to have everybody here. Um, let's see, any adjustments to the agenda for tonight? Annie? Uh, yes, we will have, we have a posted meeting for tomorrow at 4.30. And it's at that meeting, we'll discuss the public health data. And we oh, sorry, decided to do that my... because- I'm just signing into my school committee meeting. We decided to do that uh, since the public health data are now posted right around five o'clock. We wanted to make sure that school committee had adequate time to review the data prior to deliberating about it publicly. Um, and the Zoom link for that meeting will be on the district website <coughs> tomorrow. Uh, and again, it's at 4.30 tomorrow. And I'll also send out a uh, notification to families during the day via email with the information. We will not be discussing for D this evening. Yeah, I think that's prudent. These data come out right before the meeting and um, I think we want some time as well as having a representative from the Board of Health with us too. As we all are aware, um, numbers are changing daily and we do wanna make sure we have that time and uh, ahead of time as well as the most current information when we look this over. Okay, and, and uh, Deb and Dragon, I believe, will join us at five tomorrow, but we'll start the meeting at 4.30. She has a, another engagement right before that. Great, thank you. Thank you for arranging that. Um, okay, so that will be for 4D. Uh, so we will essentially table 4D and push that to our meeting for tomorrow to review the public health data, update our worksheets um, since that data was just released. Uh, okay, any other adjustments? For tonight? No. All right. Um, with that, then I will move into public comment. Uh, public comment in this digital age, we're just looking for um, if you would like to speak, uh, go ahead and raise your digital hand. Uh, come off of mute when you're on, and we'll adhere to all of the policies around public comment um, that we have outlined uh, previously, primarily uh, a three minute time limit for public comment for each speaker. Um, just looking, if anyone would like to participate in public comment, please go ahead and uh, indicate so by raising your digital hand. I'm not seeing any. Okay. All right. Uh, then we will move out of public comment and into presentation and discussion items. So we have 4A, the request from the property owner at 113 Middle Street. Annie? Yes, do we have a representative here this evening um, from 113 Middle Street? So I'm going down the names, but if you are here, feel free to take yourself off of mute and let us know where you are. So certainly it doesn't mean the school committee cannot review the materials uh, or which I will share my screen. And I also know that Mr. Dwyer is here this evening as well as town administrator, Ms. Brennan. Uh, Mr. Dwyer, will, Bill Dwyer is from the planning board. I'm going to share my screen now and also invite Paul to um, speak to, are you comfortable with that, Paul, to speak to where we're at with this and our understanding of the of what we've been asked to do? Sure. Are you going to pull up a map? Is yeah. Okay. yeah. Maybe I'll just give a little background if yeah. other folks want to chime in. There, there was a property owner on 113 Middle Street who uh, made a request to the town, I believe, to add on an, an additional dwelling unit to an ADU. And um, the town is, I think there was some potential uh, infringement on town property that the homeowner claimed had been in uh, their personal use for 
decades. So they're looking for a decision from the select board about whether they can uh, use that area, that town property. And the town thoughtfully turned over to the school committee and said, well, this is by where we are doing our new uh, fields project that's mostly complete. And they wanted to make sure we didn't have any concerns associated with this. So I know the town sought legal counsel and the school as well sought legal counsel. And um, I know speaking maybe more towards the legal counsel provided by the school's uh, law firm, Dupree Law, there was some concern raised in this by which coincided with what the town's attorney said, just a, a concern about setting a precedent about how they treat town property. I think that's more, uh, while our attorney concurred with the town's attorney, I think that's probably more of an issue for the select board to determine whether they wanna set precedent in that manner. Uh, our attorney did raise the issue that, that while, and I, I did confirm this with Berkshire Design, our designer, that as far as I can tell, uh, and I will say that the maps provided, their, the maps, there's the base layer map, but then there's some hand-drawn elements associated with where the uh, additional parking might be. Yeah, if you show this, it's a little unclear. I'm, uh, exactly this is the map that. that you prefer, Paul. I just want to make sure the right one up. This is the one you'd like? It is, yeah. yeah. So that you see the hand-drawn area. The, the red is, I, I assume, the new parking. The uh, proposed accessory unit is the new area. If you see the grayed out piece below yep. the red line, it says, if it's writing is vertical, but it says existing drive, parking, um, that is school property, that's town property essentially. So that is school property. Uh, and that is where our new path is to the left of that birch tree. So technically there is, um, you know, if they, there would be some potential infringement on uh, what is considered town land under that great area, but technically it would not impinge on our current project. What our uh, legal counsel advised was that we have a multi-phased plan for our project, our athletic fields. And what we don't want to do is preclude any options in case in the second phase, we determine that we need to make some adjustments to this, um, this area. So our legal counsel is advising us, uh, advising us that we would tell the select board that we do have some concerns associated with this because I might preclude some future options. So I think the decision for us today, Annie, is what advice would we want to provide to the select board? Is that correct? That is correct because ultimately this is a select board decision. So this doesn't, this isn't the decision of uh, the school committee, but rather, I have no idea what just happened. I have no idea. <laughs> you sure that's not you, Annie? I, if, if I just learned how to do that, I really just impressed myself. That was impressive. Advice. That was something. Well, at um, least when they, fought, they uh, photobombed us, it was not inappropriate. So Yeah, um, so uh, that's uh, everyone else who's relying on me to share screens tonight, let go of that thought. Um, so, so we are, the school committee does not make that determination, just um, as you said, select board was seeking input, and perhaps either Mr. Dwyer or Ms. Brennan would like to weigh in on that. Bill, do you have any comments? Well, <clears throat> I'll say a few words. Uh, first of all, the planning board is not looking bye, to bye, bye, bye. do or um or the select board for any particular result we just didn't want to accept the filing of the until it was clear what the plan was going to be we didn't want to spend time reviewing a plan that had no uh, had no hope because we can't give them permission to drive on public land <coughs> apparently the driveway has been there for a long time um and um, I guess from the beginning. Um, so when you look at that site, you now know that uh, your property line is to the uh, north of the driveway and not to the south of the driveway. So we've all learned something. The uh, base map that uh, <coughs> was prepared for the trustees for the, 
the great land swap uh, didn't show this uh, because it wasn't a survey of that portion of the school of property. You just, uh, the base map just has the parcels that the trustees used, were involved with to the south and to the west. So it, this came as a surprise to everyone when it first came up. Um, they have some things to work out. Um, and as I said, we're not asking for any particular result. We just uh, want to have it, uh, have a, a path forward. I would you. point that the uh, representative for the land is now on the on the site. Thank you, Jane. Yeah, I, I am. I did just join Cyrus. I think I got the gist of what you were saying, Paul. I, I was having issues getting in. Um, so I, I did hear you. You're worried about potential future use, as as uh, Will was, Bill was saying. This has been basically used by the homeowner and their family for almost 60 years. Um, and I'd, I would want to ask the town attorney what he thinks that means for uh, any kind of claim to ownership or long term use of that. Uh, he's, he's tr we, we kind of ran into this and it's pushed his project to try to give his mom a place to live as she's slowly going blind. Um, back until the spring already. And if we can't continue to use that driveway and to access his existing parking as they've been doing for the last 50 years, it's gonna cost him an extra five to $10,000 to build a new driveway, do a new curb cut, rebuild the curb, build a new driveway. It's probably gonna kill one of the trees in the tree belt because we're gonna be right on top of the, the root system of that tree. Um, so I would, I would, I would, I would ask to to really think what that driveway might be used for, um, as the school has already put in the walkway and it, they didn't need this land, um, because it, it is going to have a huge impact on on Phil and his family. If yeah, Mr. Lee, if I could just chime in, just to be clear, so um, just to, if the I would recommend the school committee sort of stays in our lane, right? It's not for us to advise on this precedential question, the legal, that's the select board's um, bailiwick. For us, it, yeah, the question was to us, are we concerned about how it might infringe on school property or, or school options into the future? Our attorney did say, you know, there, she advised us to be cognizant that it might preclude future options. I think that is the pertinent question though. Do we have any uh, intent or do we really foresee a reasonable opportunity that we would change our projects in some way and need that area? As of now, no, that is not part of our plan. Uh, the plan would, for this area would be fully implemented at the end of phase one, which has already occurred. So there is some minimal risk that we, down the road, we might want to change our mind and that option would be foreclosed upon. But Right now, we don't have any plans to use that property. And right now, what they propose, based on our discussion with our designer, would not impinge on our current use of the land. So is there, and I, and I totally respect that, and I know that it's impossible for any individual board or committee or attorney or anyone to make decisions about how anything will be used for 50 to 100 years. Um, and that's why ownership of anything is, is forever, because you, you never know what you would do. Is there any path that the board sees that we could take to um, allow this to happen, to give consent that he can continue to use the driveway? And because I, I don't, I think if we go back to the select board and um, with with what has been discussed just now, um, we we won't be able to continue moving forward. There'll there'll still be questions about this. I, I think it will still be uncertain about whether or not. Um, the prices can continue to use the driveway and we, we won't have a direction to go. I will say I'm happy to get in front of the select board and discuss what we're discussing now. I just don't know if it's appropriate for us to, as you say, to say yes or no. Um, we are, I think, I, I guess I feel, and Bill chime in, I, our job is to assess, to, to tell the select board what we see as a risk or not a risk. I think I will add, I believe the school council is pretty clear about that, that the school committee does not have the authority to approve or disapprove this. This is a select board's decision. And certainly, as you said, Paul, if it's helpful to the select board for that's generous of you to offer to be in front of them, but it isn't the school committee's, it doesn't fall within the school committee's authority. Okay. I, 
at least in, when, when I hear that, I think that would be enough if, if there's a motion passed to push this back to the decision of the select board. I, I think that would give them what they need to, to make a decision about use of that, that piece. So Annie, can you hear, I know I had trouble earlier today with my Zoom, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. So, um, uh, you know, speaking f uh, not on behalf of the, but as the town administrator and had been in that meeting with the, with the select board, I think this is exactly the information that they wanted to have from you. And um, I think my role was to make sure you had all of the information, which I'm, I'm very glad that um, Bill Dwyer is here. One of the questions I did ask Bill today, which I think is a little bit unclear and, and um, whether this uh, has any influence on any um, recommendations you might have is I asked Bill, uh, is this going to be an additional impact as to what already is there now? And Bill, can you just share with me what your answer was so they can understand that as well? Sure, just looking at the project, um, this is not a request to add a new driveway. This is a uh, request to perhaps get a revocable license or some temporary permission to leave it where it is. Um, so it's not increasing, it's not posing an increased burden above and beyond what you are already dealing with. I mean, the driveway's been there, you're working around it. Um, nothing will change as far as I as far as I've seen from any of the plans, nothing will change except that they will uh, move their parking area off of the town property and onto their own property. That's the um, sort of the jagged uh, red box that was on one of the plans. And one other thing just to add, you know, there, uh, part of the whole reason we have that connected to Middle Street is for emergency access, vehicle access. So that would be something we would want to be concerned about is that they don't impede uh, vehicle access. And whether that's an agreement with Mr. Price or some signage, I think that would be a smart move uh, on the school's part. So does it make sense at this point, uh, Carolyn, do you have what you need if uh, the select board wanted to invite Paul uh, and I would be more than happy to join him to, at a select board meeting if they had additional questions about this and then they can make whatever determination they'd like to make. That's and they can certainly good. check with uh, public safety as well, Paul, uh, regarding emergency access. Great. Okay. So this, this was not, um, we did not have this listed as a voting item in terms of any kind of motions. It sounds like we have direction for next steps. Uh, Paul, thank you for volunteering to be part of that discussion with the select board. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else on this item? I don't believe so. Okay, uh, then we will move to 4B. Uh, Senora is with us. Uh, update on the squad's abroad field trip that was previously approved. And may I ask, Senora, are you comfortable speaking to it? Because I'm completely paranoid to uh, share a screen, right? <laughs> yes. yeah, and actually, I, that's fine. I gotcha. Um, actually, it, it is a, there's a link there. Thank you. And I just actually got the most recent link from the um, squad's abroad president. So, um, I just wanted to guess, go back on the board saying we were scheduled to go in 2021 and you um, you all approved it and we're very thankful. But we, um, I was advised that obviously that's not going to happen this year. So I wanna make sure that uh, we are on the board for next year. Um, I know there's gonna be another trip presented. I wanna tell you all that it is a whole different kind of student that's looking for both trips. So I do think there's nothing wrong with doing both trips. Um, one One group is, going to be doing service, my group, and, um, and the other group is, um, will be doing a lot more touring and, and traveling of two different countries. So I'm, I'm hoping that I can continue with this. And I've already started to talk to my students and I will begin the process as long as everybody is supportive. And this is again, we're talking 2022. We're not looking at uh, international field trips for 2021, except for uh, the trip 
the trip that was rescheduled from last year, if I'm not mistaken. There was the uh, Earlier trip that was spring. supposed to happen in April of 2020, right? It was supposed to happen yes. in April of this year. And, and I'm happy to expand, but I know I've already presented, so I don't want to um, burden everybody with the entire plan, but it's a service trip to Honduras in 2022. Um, and there is a link provided on your on your agenda or on, um, I know Dr. McKenzie provided a link for everybody. Yes, thank you, Senora. The information's in the shared folder. Um, there's a, a flyer there about the trip. Uh, I guess I would ask the committee, are there any questions uh, with this? It's essentially, it's being shifted to 22. Uh, I can't tell that there's any major price difference from what we had talked about before. Uh, it may just be a date shift. Any any right. questions from the group? The only question I have, and apologies if you already mentioned this, Senora, is um, if there were some unexpected uh, thing that happened in 2022, do we get to push it forward uh, to 2023? Do we we have those provisions are still baked in, correct? I would imagine yes. Yeah, I haven't even collected any deposits at this point, so. Um, Definitely, I, I, I can check with the president of the company, but I'm sure he would be uh, amenable to that. Great, thank you. And I think as a reminder, just for public, for any of these trips that we've talked about, um, of course, we're, we're going to follow state guidance. So, you know, if uh, state guidance comes out saying uh, no international school sponsored trips for a particular period of time, that has not happened. But if it did, we of course would need to follow um, those guidelines from the state. So just keep that in mind in terms of, of course, we're, we're going to have uh, state and uh, health and safety considerations in the foremost of our minds. Okay, any other questions from folks on the committee? This is not a, um, a item that needs an action. We did approve it previously. Um, Senior, thank you for the information. It looks like an exciting and um, really, uh, I think, thought provoking and I hope inspiring trip for the kids that do uh, get to go on this. Thank you. I hope so too. All right. Great. Well, thank you. Um, we will then move to the next field trip proposal, which is France and London. And that is uh, Mr. Burns and uh, Ms. Lynch. All right, well, I can speak briefly to um, our field trip proposal. Um, I don't know if school committee members have had a chance to uh, review our letters, um, but we're planning um, or we would like to plan um, a trip to France uh, with an extension to London in April of 2022. Um, this would be through EF Tours, um, which we have used several times in the past. Um, usually it has been Ms. Camuso who has gone with them, um, but both, both Mr. Burns and myself have traveled with EF Tours um, and it's been a great experience. Um, I know the itinerary is linked if you wanted to look at that more closely. Um, and you may be wondering, I'll tell you right off the bat, what if COVID is still a problem in April of 2022? Um, they uh, assess 45 days before departure um, what the situation is like. If it was still a problem in just the area we were going to, they would route us to a different destination. If it was still a problem everywhere, they would either refund people or we would reschedule the trip for a later date, we are planning on rescheduling it for April of 2023, if that was the case. Got it, and this trip is with EF as well, correct? Correct. Yeah, and I know um, just from the prior trip that has been rescheduled, it seems like EF has been responsive to updating their policies and working with um, districts that are, you know, obviously states uh, have different policies around these trips and different countries uh, are in different stages. So um, it's good to see that I know EF seems to have a relationship with our district from past use. Yes. And we have, and, a, we have a good um, 
point person at EF. I would just like to add that if this year's, if this spring's trip gets canceled, um, EF said that any students that are on that trip can just transfer all the money they've paid to the trip we're planning for 2022. Um, and for seniors who are getting vouchers, they can either pass those vouchers to someone else or they can use them in college to travel with EF. Oh my God, one of my favorite names. Okay. So it looks great. And the, the assumption is that you'll do that two day extension into London. Is that right? Correct. Looks great to me. Yeah, I was just looking again at the, um, the letter in terms of uh, the connections to the curriculum. Sorry, we have some uh, people trying to come into this meeting that are not supposed to be here. So we're removing them. <laughs> Much, my apologies. I could tell from the screen name that they shouldn't be here. So <laughs> guess we're popular today. Um, but no, I mean, this looks like a, a jam packed, you know, but obviously uh, a lot of relevance to uh, activities that they would be getting within their, you know, social sciences, uh, languages, et cetera. So appreciate you outlining that for us. So uh, this is an action item in terms of needing to have uh, a vote on the approval of the Europe field trip 2022, obviously pending any, you know, as of now uh, approval, but revisiting as needed should uh, health and safety COVID considerations obviously be a, a, a different factor then. Um, but I would ask if there are any, if there is a motion to approve the Europe field trip 2022 as presented. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Great. Um, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're going to move now to, uh, we're skipping over 4D for those of you who joined late. Uh, we mentioned that we're going to actually be meeting tomorrow evening, uh, 4.30 is our start time, to review the public health data given it was just released just prior to this meeting and we also will have a representative from uh, the Board of Health uh, that will be able to join us as well. And I'm just going to remove one more. Okay. All right, and so now we're gonna to move to 4E, which is, uh, are we discussing considerations for phase three uh, this evening? Uh, let folks know that the HEA and the school committee will have a discussion in executive session uh, to discuss any recommended revisions to the current district reopening plan. Uh, that makes sense in light of what we're learning on the ground as we implement our plan. Um, so that'll happen in executive session. And then um, once their uh, is, agreement is reached, then that would be discussed publicly. Great. All right, so we will do that right after this meeting uh, and go into um, executive session with HEA. All right, uh, next we have the mask delegate update and that is me. I'm just gonna bring up my notes real quick. Um, I had the pleasure of attending remotely the MASC uh, meeting, which is the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. Uh, I, I don't recall the last time we have been able to participate in this meeting. It's typically held in person in November uh, out on the Cape. And um, it, it's just sometimes very difficult for us to get out there uh, and represent. It is, I think, Humera maybe three days long usually. Uh, and they jam packed it into one day with the morning being uh, a welcome from the uh, current uh, president of MASC, Deborah Davis. They had a, a presentation from Charlie Lyons about internet essentials um, impact on education that was sponsored by Comcast. And then uh, some opening remarks from the president of the National School Boards Association uh, and the executive director of the National School Boards Association. A lot of discussions around, um, you know, these unprecedented times and kind of the, uh, 
the position that um, school boards and school committees have been put in nationally in terms of their involvement in um, school decisions, uh, uh, working very closely with administration to, uh, over the summer, obviously develop plans, uh, review plans, and a lot of discussion too around just the importance of those relationships and communications. Uh, it did leave me feeling very thankful that uh, uh, not only our relationship across our school committee members as a group of five, um, that I feel like we do work very well together. We may not always agree all the time and that's okay. Uh, that's why we're all bringing our own perspectives uh, to topics, but we are always um, respectful. And I think that we have um, really worked well through very um, trying and you know uh, stressful times. Uh, it also left me feeling thankful about the administration and the educators that we have in this district because, um, it, you know, everybody has just been giving their all. Um, the, you know, we all work very well together and we're, we as a group, as a school committee are here to support you. So uh, I appreciated, you know, kind of getting that bigger state perspective um, and just that reinforcement of how much, you know, this year has impacted those relationships. And so very thankful in the spirit of Thanksgiving next week. Uh, the keynote speaker that um, spoke, she, uh, her name is uh, Dr. Kalisa Warnham, and she did a keynote on understanding the connection between cultural proficiency and equity. There was a lot there and um, it was less so much of a dialogue, but more of a, a presentation from uh, this, this senior director of educational equity. Uh, she was with uh, Brookline Public Schools. She's a cultural proficiency coach uh, and her organization that um, she speaks to different districts is KW Diversity uh, Incorporated. And I really left that keynote session with just some some good ideas around uh, districts can talk about being, uh, and teachers can talk about, and administrators, anyone can talk about being a, a culturally proficient educator, but what does that really look like? What does that mean? What are the things that culturally proficient educators do? Uh, and so she had some good guidance, some great uh, examples around you know, self-reflection, around really understanding your students, around um, the willingness to have difficult conversations. Um, and with all of that, then if you're gonna articulate a vision of being culturally proficient, then living that vision and maintaining those uh, essential elements that she outlined, which were you can, uh, in looking at your district, name the differences that are there, call them out, claim the differences that are there, reframe those differences, train about those differences, and then adapt. And so I, I found it just a, a really powerful session. I'm happy to share my notes with anybody that would be interested. I don't believe it was recorded, uh, which is really too bad, but if it is, I will, um, I'll look for that. And if it is, I'm happy to share that with folks. Um, and then the afternoon, which is really the, um, the voting part uh, around the resolutions, the takeaway that I had from that is that um, primarily many of these resolutions were, uh, did not warrant a whole lot of discussion. They were supported uh, wholeheartedly from the group, but there were, um, let's see, six, uh, five resolutions that were discussed. The first one around MCAS uh, and the states, uh, essentially these resolutions are, what is going to be the position of the MASC organization, you know, in terms of uh, putting forward to the state, this is our resolution on these issues. Uh, and then it is for the state to consider what they wanna do with that. Um, MCAS, uh, that did pass. That was the resolution. We brought that up um, a few weeks ago. Humera, I believe you mentioned that. Uh, and it is around a consideration of, of not uh, continuing to administer or utilize MCAS in this pandemic environment, in this um, combination of hybrid, remote, uh, and in-person learning. Uh, there was concerns on both sides. There was actually discussion. This was not something that just flew through as, yeah, we all support, don't use MCAS. There was actually a good discussion around the use of MCAS results uh, in terms of things like the John and uh, Abigail Adams scholarship. 
uh, which were, those were just uh, awarded to students who choose to go to a Massachusetts uh, public university. And MCAS is one of those measures that is utilized. And so they, they're, they didn't want there to be unintended consequences about not having this measure and therefore potentially negatively impacting those candidates. Uh, so that was one resolution. Another one was around uh, a lower voting age for municipal elections. It was a very interesting discussion uh, in order to then move forward as a town decision. Uh, uh, basically, it's, it's not anything that the school, uh, the schools can necessarily oversee, but more trying to get younger people involved in town uh, politics and issues of, of where they live. Um, another resolution was around increasing funding for K-12, which uh, we did discuss some of that in terms of funding in relation to um, initiatives within the state, uh, COVID support. Uh, so those, those were both passed. And then there was a resolution at the very end around attendance. Um, and it seemed a bit uh, punitive in its wording. It wound up being tabled for a later time, and that will go forward to um, a subsequent meeting they haven't announced yet. But this language had to do with um, uh, remote attendance versus, it, there was no real stipulation about attendance remote versus attendance in person. And it made it essentially like attendance is optional, is the takeaway that people had in terms of attendance at school. And that was not, uh, because it wasn't universally understood what was intended by the resolution language, it was tabled for another time. So I appreciated being able to be involved. It was a beautiful Saturday, I'll tell you that much. And uh, I think a lot of people you know, were ready to get the motions done and get the resolutions approved, but um, it was nice to be able to participate and represent Hadley. So thank you for uh, allowing me to do that for, uh, on behalf of the school committee. And um, I look forward to being able to have that opportunity again in the future. Thank you, Heather, for representing us. Um, I, uh, the, the keynote part was something that was available to all school committee members, and I was lucky enough to attend and was pretty active in the Zoom uh, chat and, and interacting with other uh, colleagues around the state. That, that talk was pretty incredible. I sure hope you are able to find a recording so we can share it with our colleagues. Uh, I, it's consistent with a lot of the DEI um, trainings that I'm seeing across the country. And I was just so pleased to see the uh, MASC taking a leadership role around bringing that kind of awareness to our school committee colleagues around the state. One thing that I really walked away with was uh, it's, it's not enough to have a, uh, an anti-racism resolution um, that if we really are serious about cultural proficiency and a greater level of awareness of race and how those issues play out in the way we teach, the way we support students, the way we interact with one another, um, that we need to invest in the learning and the transformation that has to take place um, on the part of school employees, on the part of students. And, um, I'm happy to report that there's a number of um, different communities from school council to um, uh, Hadley Learns to the DEI committee as part of the town who are all thinking about what that could look like. Um, so I'm, um, I, I'm looking forward to that conversation at the school committee level when it comes time to um, talk about budgets and really putting our money where our mouth is. Yeah, thanks, Humara, and I'm glad you were able to join the keynote as well. Great. Well, thank you. I appreciate um, being able to report out on that to you. And I think with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris for the business manager reports. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I have three reports tonight. The first one is the expense report uh, that basically you see every month. This is through this past Monday. Um, not really a lot to report in this. Um, all of the expenditures are pretty much according to plan. Um, there are a couple that are higher. Those will still be transferred on uh, to grant accounts. Um, some of the grant accounts we just got approved for this week, so that's why you still aren't really seeing a lot of uh, spending in the grant area. But um, what we will be doing in the next couple of weeks is transferring expenses over. Um, moving them out of the regular budget into the grants. But even with that, 
you know, we're still in very good shape, pretty much right according to plan uh, with the spending for the general fund. Any questions on that report at all? No. Okay, um, next up we have the grants report, which um, as I said, looks pretty thin in the amounts used column. Um, the top grant, the 102 Coronavirus Relief Fund grant, uh, you can see we still have $47,000 remaining. There's a good amount of expenses that we can still move to that grant. Um, they were kind of just placed in a couple of accounts, uh, you know, as placeholders until we could get the grant accounts set up. And now that they are set up, we'll be moving them out. Um, I can see about probably $20,000 would be moved uh, into that particular grant account. Um, the 113 ESER account is another Corona um, grant that we got. And you can see the, the, the 102 grant ends on December 30th. So we've basically been focusing on applying expenses to that grant. The 113 grant ends on June 30th and we can even carry that forward into the next fiscal year if we want to. So. As you can see, we've only spent $450 in that grant so far. We're kind of just focusing on, um, you know, spending the 102 grant while we have it and then moving on to the 113. Um, summer vacation grant, a good portion of that will come out of the regular budget and go to that. That was basically for uh, the summer program for the special ed uh, students. Uh, remote learning technology, the 118 grant, that's another new one. That is pretty much fully spent. Um, we haven't gotten the bills yet for it, but we have, um, I think just yesterday, actually, I saw a large amount of boxes with CDW on the side, which means they're probably uh, some kind of hybrid Chromebook where it's a tablet and a Chromebook. Um, so that, that one will pretty much be used up. And the rest of them are basically just uh, grant accounts that you've seen either over the past several years or even over the past couple of years. And once I... Uh, dig into those, I will be transferring a, you know, a, a good amount of expenses that we've seen so far this year into those grant accounts. Items like the 240 and the 262 grant, we actually just got approval for those on Tuesday this week. So, you know, it's, it's moving a little slowly with the grants, but now we've been approved for all of these. So we can move forward and, and start applying expenses to them. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions for the grant accounts at all. Chris, I had a quick question on the grants. Um, yeah. Looking at the grants, would it be true to say that the 102, 113, 114, and 118 are kind of one-time, one-year grants currently? I would say so. I mean, the, the 114 for the summer, I, I don't know, and, and maybe Ann can uh, just kind of jump in on that one. That, that quite possibly could be. The rest of them are one-time, certainly. <laughs> Yeah, so 114 was a, a competitive grant for programming that could very well be continued. I wouldn't be surprised if that, we'd have to reapply for it. So again, it's not an entitlement, it's a competitive grant. Um, but the other ones were, as Chris indicated, primarily to assist a district, all districts with responding to COVID-19 and the demands of COVID-19. And um, I'm sure Ms. Wachowitz and Ms. St. Peters who are on the call will be pleased to hear that those boxes were filled with Chromebook convertibles, which they know where those are headed <laughs> to, to their neck of the woods. Thank if you. I'm on the, the 417 and 460, the two bottom ones, and just a shout out Annie, to you all and, and the, the team for putting together those grants. Those, are those one year grants? Those are, those are, um, they're competitive. They could be, the opportunity could be there again next year. This is the governor's priority. If you recall last year before COVID hit, when we were looking at the FY21, um, the governor's original budget, House Ways and Means, and then the governor came back and um, maintained early college high school and innovation pathways as priorities. So I would anticipate when the dust settles in terms of the state budget that we would see those competitive opportunities annually and, um, and we would apply uh, for anything that we're eligible for. To help expand those programs, we wanna add additional pathways over time at Hopkins Academy and um, to enhance the early college high school program. Can you remind me how that 
early college money is being used? The early college money is being used. A big chunk of it is goes, we received an invoice from Greenfield Community College. The students who are accepted into that program, they don't pay for their college credits. So the grant funds, um, some of that money gets transferred for the tuition fees. Um, and uh, some of the funds there are used or are stipends for faculty who do the program evaluation, admissions, act as advisors for all of these programs and work on developing um, additional pathways going forward. Thanks. Great, right. it is impressive when you look at the amount awarded yes. and uh, yeah, kudos to the whole team. Yeah, the teachers did a very good job assisting. It was a team of uh, teachers and faculty that really uh, put those proposals together. I appreciate it very much. All right, Chris. All right, um, then we can jump to the revolving accounts report. Um, so, you know, if you look at them, athletic revolving, obviously not a, um, not a lot of activity there in the last few months. Um, the lunch account has been going down. Um, you know, it's, it started the year at 68, it's down to 44. I, I know that looks like a terrible trend that would um, end in the negative by the end of the year, um, but there's a couple of items with that that, you know, you should be aware of. One is that the state, uh, well, actually the, the reimbursements that we get for um, breakfast and lunch, um, those are always two months behind. So the revenues that we've seen here are actually what we received in, um, you know, for July and August, which is minimal amounts, a couple thousand dollars a piece. Um, they really kick in once the school year starts and we get reimbursed for lunches there. So we haven't yet received the uh, September or October ones. Those will come in, um, you know, this month. It'll get posted by the end of this month and in December. So that's when you'll see the balance start to move its way back up again. Um, preschool revolving, I have to actually contact the uh, town on that and just see. Um, I, I only saw one small deposit in, into that account, so I have to see what's going on with that in terms of if they're just uh, a little bit behind on posting revenues, that could be the case. Uh, so I will certainly let you know next month what the situation is with that. Um, student activity, largely unchanged, really hovers up and down around $105,000, $106,000. Uh, Hadley kids, the same, you know, not a lot of change there. School choice, again, you know, it looks like it's growing by leaps and bounds, but, but that's, again, really because we just haven't applied any expenses to it yet. So, you know, once we start uh, applying expenses, typically I do a transfer around the end of December, and then another one I usually wait until the end of June to do. Um, so then we'll see that balance coming back down. Hey, Chris, why did the athletics drop in August? That was um, because we had parked some athletic fields money there. Uh, okay. we, we parked about 17, I think it was $17,320, actually, if you want the exact amount. I do. Um, and that, that got spent in that, um, in that month out of the uh, athletic revolving for the field. We kind of used that one first just to get it out of an account where it really was just kind of sitting temporarily. So um, that's, that's what the big drop was. Gotcha. All right. Anything else, Chris? Uh, no, I have nothing else. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, Chris. Um, at our next meeting, we'll do our school committee reports and discussion. We do have an action item for the policies that are being presented for the second read. Um, so we saw those on first read last time we met. Those are policies ACAB through the CHC regulations. Um, primarily, it, it appears to be um, uh, per attorney, uh, you know, minor language changes, but uh, policy Review committee, would you like to say anything about these? I would say they weren't the most riveting, but please, Humera. <laughs> no, that's all I was, I was going to say, Annie. Uh, it, as you said, Heather, pretty straightforward, all uh, things required by law and recommended by our attorney. All right, so this is our second read. Uh, are there any questions 
or concerns with the policies presented as revised? If not, then is there a motion to approve the policies uh, presented in this second reading? So move. I'll move. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks for the work. Yeah. Heather, I, I did realize something. Um, so the last time we met, I just need to be reminded, did we vote? We nominated Paul. Can we review who's on which negotiations committee so uh, I can make sure that the HEA has this information so we can start yes. scheduling negotiations. So I don't, I think we voted for one for unit A, but if you could remind me and then we maybe nominated Paul in absentia, but didn't vote. I um, that's correct. So unit A, we did settle on that and vote and it was unit D mm -hmm. um, that we had uh, Ethan, is that right? Yeah, Ethan yeah. Was you're right. You're right. And um, we, and Paul, you, uh, we're asking you, would you be interested to serve with Ethan on the Unit D uh, subcommittee? Sure. There we go. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion to uh, approve uh, Ethan and Paul as the subcommittee for the Unit D uh, negotiations for um, contract? So moved. Yeah. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you. Yes. Yeah, good catch, Annie. All right, um, we have two more, well, three more meetings on yeah. the books. One is tomorrow, tomorrow at 4.30. We will talk about um, the data. And there are next two meetings after that are December 7th at 5.30 and December 21st at 5.30. Uh, I do need a motion uh, to um, adjourn this regular meeting and move to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and to reconvene an open session. And that, and actually to not, because we're not, we're doing the health data tomorrow. So we will That's not, right. reconvene. To not reconvene an open session. Is there a motion? Motion. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor. Aye. 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 And right, you actually have to roll call that one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Paul. Yes. Tara? Yes. Ethan? Yes. Mara? Yes. Okay. No, no particular order. That's just the boxes on my screen. So, <laughs> all right, great. The uh, motion passes. Then we will adjourn the regular meeting and go into executive session for the public. We really appreciate you coming out.